Hey guys, welcome back to Lex Biz. I'm Tatiana and today I'm gonna to help you get the best price for your products from your suppliers. So it all starts with number one, being professional and polite. This is just, you know, basic mannerisms. I'm sure your mother taught you this when you're young. Um, you want to make sure, first of all, that you're being professional. So even if you're a small company, even if you don't have a company, if you're just starting, um, you still want to make sure that your emails are written nicely and professionally. You want to make sure that you have spell checker on, make sure there's no issues, uh, errors with that. I would recommend to have your website set up. Even if it's just a simple website, it's good to have a website set up or even just like a lead page. I would also recommend to have a domain email. So don't have, you know, your name at hotmail.com or your name at gmail.com. It's good to have like info at luxhealth.com. So figure out your brand name, buy the domain name on Gmail. It's like $5 a month on G Suite or whatever it is. And it just shows that you're serious. You have a serious business and uh, that's what they're looking for. So they're looking to work with serious people. They don't just want people who want samples from them for cheap. You also want to be polite in your email. So, you know, at your earliest convenience, please contact me back. Just be polite with your responses. Also take into consideration the time zone. There's going to be a big time zone difference. So, you know, it's good to send your emails when you know they might be working so you get a faster response. Second is you don't want to dive into the MOQ right away. So MOQ stands for minimum order quantity. So you don't want to ask them that question like as soon as you contact them because they're going to discard you. They're going to know that you're a small time person. You're not even a company because you're clearly only looking to order the smallest amount possible. And they don't want people who order a small amount. They want people who order large amounts. So don't ask them that right away. It is an important question to ask, but don't ask that as your first question. Next, you want to make sure that you don't negotiate too much the first time. So negotiation is good. Um, it's, it's definitely a good thing, but you know, don't um, overstep your boundaries. So when you're first establishing a relationship with a supplier, if they quote you, you know, 20 cents a unit, don't negotiate down to 10 cents a unit. That's pretty dramatic. So if you want to negotiate, maybe negotiate to 19, 18 cents a unit. Just be sensible with the way that you negotiate with them. Next is you want to make sure that you create a test order. So when you're first placing your order with your supplier, just tell them that, you know, I'm introducing a new product and I would like to play a test order because I want to test out the market. So when you use the term test order, oftentimes they're going to understand that you're going to be placing a smaller order and attempt to test the market out with intention to place a larger order in the future. So what I would recommend is I would say, you know, I would like to order 500 units this time. If the MOQ is like a thousand, maybe you want to order 500 or 200 units as a test order, but with the intention of ordering a thousand units in my second order. So just kind of have an agreement where you know you you tell them that that's what I'm going to do and oftentimes they understand that they know that if it's a new product that you're introducing to your brand you don't know how your customers are going to feel about it and so they're willing to to lower that MOQ for you. So another thing you could do is you could agree to a certain order size but have the manufacturer spread it out over a longer period of time like 6 months. So if you agree to 4,000 units, because obviously the more you order, the slower the cost per unit will be. So if you agree to 4,000 units, your cost per unit will be much lower than if you agree to 2,000 units. But say you don't need 4,000 units all at once, that's a lot, then what you can do is you can spread it out over six months and say every two months I'm gonna order, a, have a couple thousand units ready for me. Or what you could do is agree to a particular order size and have the manufacturer store it for you and then ship it when necessary. So if you're gonna order 6,000 units, you don't wanna ship all 6,000 to Amazon because you're gonna encounter very large storage fees. So instead what you could just do is have the manufacturer store it, sometimes they'll do that for you, and then just kind of take some as you need it. So those would be the best ways to get the best price. Obviously the more you order, the lower the price would be. But in the end, I actually just recommend when you're placing your first order to just go with the MOQ. So go with the lowest order quantity, even if it's going to cost you more, because I just think that's the most sensible thing to do because you don't have the data. You don't know how it's going to sell and you don't want to 
cost a fortune for a product that may not sell that well on Amazon. So go with the, the lowest number of units and then you'll figure out the data relatively soon once it's selling on Amazon and you can place that second order as soon as you need to. So just be aware of that. Hopefully this helps. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you guys want to know how I find my suppliers on Alibaba, you can click the link below to lexhelp.com slash China where you get a free video training on how I source from Alibaba.com. See you guys later. Bye.